Hello, welcome to Papa Nick's Music. I am, as always, your host, Papa Nick Lewis, and today we are starting a several weeks long sojourn into music that I like. Now, I know, I usually talk about music that I like. That's, <laughs> dur, it's Papa Nick's music. It's not, you know, somebody else's music. <laughs> um, but, I usually try to put the my 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 taste of the week, whatever it is I'm talking about, I usually try to put it into a context other than, well, this is just shit that I like. But for the next few weeks, uh, no, it's just shit that I like. <laughs> um, <laughs> I will have uh, uh, frames for each one of these. Today, for example, we're going to be talking about my 10 favorite drummers. Um, but I am not trying to set forth uh, the the proposition that these are the 10 best drummers. Uh, I'm not even setting forth the proposition that they are the 10 best drummers that I've ever heard. No, I'm not talking about technique. I'm not, I'm not talking about any of that nonsense. These are just my 10 favorite drummers. Okay? Um, so we, in the next few weeks, in the next several weeks actually, when we're talking about this stuff, I'm not, I'm not trying to make any broad reaching uh, uh, I'm not trying to draw any broad conclusions or anything like that this is just this is stuff that I like and I'm trying to talk about stuff that I like and so I want to get some conversations going these are my favorite drummers what are your favorite drummers you know point me in a direction of somebody there's a chance I don't know or am not conversant with uh, the the musicians uh, that you like so yeah let's 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 swap our tastes here um, uh, what are the criteria for being included in one of these uh, top 10 favorite uh, videos? Um, it's nice and straightforward. I got two. First, um, the musician, the, the album, whatever it is I'm talking about that week, has to inspire me somehow. There, there's something about uh, that musician's style. There's something about the content of that. There's something there that I really like, that I personally... Uh, connect with um, and it might be technical proficiency that you know a lot of these drummers are actually very good drummers um, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that there's just something about this performer that I personally like that I personally feel um, that I think if 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 we could somehow uh, explore these things in great enough detail, we would be able to map out what my tastes are to the point where we could make ac accurate predictions uh, regarding uh, music that I've never heard before. Okay? Um, I'm not interested in doing that, but I'm, I'm thinking the, the one thing that these all have in common is that they resonate with me. Right? Uh, the second criterion is that I have to have a copy somewhere in my library of this person's performance. Now, um, I have a decent amount of music. I'm, I'm not a collector, so I don't have, you know, you know thousands upon thousands upon thousands of, of vinyl uh, albums, you know, stacked up around, uh, around the, the corporate uh, uh, headquarters here. Um, I have, if I'm being honest, probably the neighborhood of 700-ish albums on vinyl. Uh, I've got probably another thirteen to fifteen hundred um, albums on CD. Um, I have probably seventy five to a hundred albums on cassette that I'm hanging on to because I haven't upgraded to a more permanent version. I've probably got, I don't know, thirty, forty um, albums that I have downloaded. Um, so it's not like you know, I'm, I'm not running the Library of Congress here, okay? Uh, my collection is not all inclusive. Um, but it is deliberate. Uh, I do curate my music collection. I do not buy things on, well, not anymore. Now that we have streaming. Back in the good old days, I used to buy things on a whim. If I thought there was something that I might like about a, a work for whatever reason. I'd buy a copy of the album and I'd take it home and I'd listen to it. And if I liked it, boom, it went into the stacks. And if I didn't, okay, it went into another stack and the next time I was going to a used record store, I'd, <laughs> I'd take it and I'd recycle it, right? 
uh, now that I can stream music, I don't have to actually do that. Uh, but even if even then, if I'm streaming something and I really like it, I'm going to buy a copy of it. I'm not. Uh, I I don't want to be dependent upon streaming services uh, for the music that I really really love. If I really really love it, I want to have a copy of it that is mine. That you know that the man can't. <laughs> <laughs> can't come and take away from me. So, in order to be included in the top 10, I've got to have a copy of it somewhere, in some form, some fashion, so that I can listen to their music on a regular basis. And that's it. Those are the only two things I'm looking at. I'm, I'm looking at my library. You know, in this instance, this week we're talking about drummers. So I'm looking at my library. Out of all of these uh, performers, who are the drummers that grab me the most? Um... Yeah, that took a lot more effort to explain than I thought it would. <laughs> um, as always, this is a top 10. It's a top 10 favorites, but it's still a top 10, which means Papa Nick's Music's uh, top 10 series is unofficially sponsored by Schoferhofer Beer. If you like Hefeweizen beer and grapefruit soda, if you like a shandy, in other words, then you'll love Schoferhofer. Mm, that's good beer. Also, this is the top 10, so we got to talk about the subjectivity notice. Um, one of the, the, the guiding principles here at Pop and X Music is that we fully believe, we firmly believe, that there is no such thing as objectively good or objectively bad art. There is only art that I like and art that I do not. And as long as we keep that in mind, this is a wonderful conversation. It's fun, it's entertaining, it's enlightening. Um, it only goes off the rails when somebody in the conversation gets hung up on being seen as objectively right. So let's not do that. I'm not trying to convince you that these are the 10 uh, most talented, most technically proficient drummers for, a, for today's example. Uh, I'm not even going to make the argument that they are the, technically the best drummers in my collection. Uh, I've got albums back there... Uh, of Gene Krupa and Buddy Rich, neither of whom are on my top ten, and they are two of the best drummers of all time. So, you know, no. I'm just saying that these are my favorites. Okay? Okay. Uh, shall we get started? Yes. I'm going to have one more sip of chauffeur over. Mm, that's good beer. Okay. Coming in at number ten. Um... Now, I just mentioned that I've got Gene Krupa back there. I've got Buddy Rich back there. Uh, and so these are going to have to be like super master drummers, right? Nope. My number 10 is Robbie Bachman, the drummer for Bachman Turner Overdrive. I love Bachman Turner Overdrive's music. Uh, I've got all of their albums. And I mainly like uh, Bachman Turner Overdrive because I like Randy Bachman. I, li I like him as a songwriter. I like him as a guitarist. Uh, I even like him as a singer. I, th I think he, his voice matches his material very well. I don't think he's a technically good singer. But I think that his voice fits his material well. Uh, I like uh, uh, BTO because of Fred Turner, because he's a great bassist and a fantastic rock singer. But I really like Robbie Backman. Um, one of my... I've, I've got uh, Not Fragile as the album that I'm using as my example here. Uh, I probably should have BTO2 uh, because BTO2 has uh, Let It Ride, um, which I adore. It's probably my favorite BTO song. And a lot of the reason why I like it as much as I do is... The, the, the drumming in that. The fact that uh, Robbie is playing his drum kit, but he's also playing uh, on a separate track, he's playing bongos, and the way it works together just, oh man, it's fantastic. I love Robbie Backman. Number 10, Robbie Backman. Number 9, my number 9 uh, drummer is a drummer I have only recently come across. Within the past year or so, even though they released all of their albums in the early 70s, um, and I do not have individual albums. I've got an ultimate collection here. But I've got the ultimate collection, five LPs on three CDs for the band Fanny. I love Fanny. Oh, man, how I missed out on this stuff the first time around, I will never know, because this is 
oh my god, fantastic music. And a big chunk of the reason why I like Fanny as much as I do is their drummer, Alice DeBurr, who is brilliant. Oh, man, I love this stuff. If you have not listened to Fanny, if you, like me, are laboring, uh, as, as I was, laboring under the, the, the painful shroud of ignorance of Fanny, then, oh, by all means, snap up a copy of this stuff. Stream it if you have to. Fanny is wonderful stuff. I will admit it is a bit frustrating. That there are a few things that are hot button issues with me, but one of them is if you go to YouTube and you, you check out a, a, a Fanny video, if you go down to the comments, it's like everybody feels compelled to point out that these are beautiful women. And that bugs me. It bugs me first off that Fanny is always described as an all-female band. I don't know that I've ever seen the Beatles described as an all-male band. I have never seen Van Halen described as an all-male band. Right? I've never seen the Beach Boys as all-male. Ooh. But with Fanny, just like with the Go-Go's, and yeah, if we have to say they're all female. Ooh. Grow up. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, women are musicians. Oh, yeah. What a stunner. Um, but the other thing about it that bugs me is that there's this fixation on, ooh, they're beautiful as well as good musicians. Ooh, they look almost as good as they rock. Or they rock almost as good as they look, which I think is even worse. Um, yes, they are beautiful women, but that is completely beside the point. They are musicians, right? We're using our ears here, not our eyes. If the best thing you can think of to say, if the, if the most salient comment you can think of to put on a YouTube video of Fanny refers in any way to these uh, performers' gender or appearance, just stop, stop typing, bow out of the conversation, you're not adding anything. <sighs> Bugs me. Coming in at number eight, a drummer for an all-male band. <laughs> We've got Roger Taylor, the drummer for Queen. I love Roger Taylor. Um, he is, uh, he's got a nice blend of bombast and restraint. Uh, when he needs to, he can go batshit crazy in the middle of a song with all sorts of weird uh, fills and, and runs. And he can also just sit back there and, and, and keep time. Ah, I, I love Roger, uh, Roger Taylor. I've picked uh, jazz as my example um, because we've got a couple of his songs on here uh, that I think are among his better songs. We've got t -t 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 more of that jazz. Fun it. I like both of those. Um, I'm pretty sure he wrote both those songs. As soon as I started that sentence, I thought, oh shit, I should have looked that up before I started. Uh, if I'm wrong, there's a crawl down here. I'm pretty sure he wrote both of those. Um, Roger Taylor's weakness in the context of the band is that of the four, I think he's the weakest songwriter. Uh, and so he did, I think his, his songwriting on jazz is a notch uh, above. Uh, and also... There's some just wonderful uh, drum performance on here. Uh, the fill he has in Fat Bottom Girls is one of my favorite uh, drum fills. The, the, the big, you know, multi-tom uh, fill that he does before they head into the last chorus. I love that. And it makes me air drum every time I hear it. Number eight, Roger Taylor. Okay, talking about good rock drummers. My number seven drummer is Liberty DeVito, who used to be the drummer for, I'm trying to get to where I don't have much glare, there we go, yeah, not bad, yeah, anyway. Uh, Liberty DeVito used to be the drummer for Billy Joel, um, and I love Liberty DeVito's drumming. Uh, talk about uh, you know, power and restraint, oh man. Um, a lot of what Liberty DeVito plays is deceptively difficult. You think it's nice and straightforward when you're listening to it, but then if you start trying to play it, you realize, oh wait, no, no, he's <laughs> there. There's some there's some difficult shit going on here. Uh, I really like that. I like I like uh, uh, things that sound effortless that are not, and Liberty DeVito does that. And Glass Houses is a is a very strong album as far as the drum parts go. 
love Liberty DeVito. Okay. Coming in at number six. I'm a big fan of the Joe Jackson, uh, of Joe Jackson in general and the Joe Jackson band uh, in particular. Um, and the drummer for the Joe Jackson band is a gentleman named Dave Houghton. And I love Dave Houghton. Um, I think he's an excellent drummer. Um, the first time that I saw Joe Jackson in concert was probably, I don't know, 10 years ago, 12 years ago, something like that. Um, I uh, went up to Austin to see him, and he was, uh, play this was after uh, he had reunited the original Joe Jackson band for Volume 4, and they had toured. Uh, and then for the next tour, uh, they dropped Gary Sanford, and it was just um, the uh, Joe Jackson, Graham Maybe, and Dave Houghton. So the Joe Jackson band minus the guitarist. And that's the, the configuration that I saw the first time I saw Joe Jackson in concert. And it was, it was amazing listening to Dave Houghton drum. Um, I knew he was a good drummer because I've got every Joe Jackson album. So <laughs> I knew he was good. I knew he was one of my favorites. But seeing him live cinched the deal. Number six, Dave Houghton. Number five. Um, I think that this uh, performer has a... Uh, is a contender for most underrated, widely acclaimed musician. Okay, there's there's a bit of a contrast here. Uh, this person is very famous. Everybody knows this person, but he's not famous for being the drummer of this all male band. I mean, he's famous for being the drummer of the band, but he's famous because he's in the band, not because he's the drummer. Uh, and of course, I'm talking about Ringo Starr. I love Ringo. My original vinyl copy of Revolver. I love Ringo. And I think Ringo is a criminally underrated drummer. A good drummer, a, a drummer who plays well within a group, has to be somebody who uh, is foundational to the, if, I think, has to be somebody who is foundational to the sound and who is... Uh, who propels the sound without getting in the way of anybody, right? You don't want to do big, fancy frill uh, 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 rolls and, and fills and things uh, when the vocalist is singing. Uh, you don't want to do a lot of, you know, uh, crashy cymbal work when uh, the guitarist is doing a solo or if the keyboardist is, is doing a solo, right? Um, you want to accompany and propel the music. This does not mean that you can't be, do fills and stuff like that. Obviously, you, you do, but you want to do those things in the right spots. You don't want to overdo it. Um, and Ringo Starr is the master of that, as far as I'm concerned. Um, he is a... Among drummers, he is famous for being a phenomenally consistent timekeeper. Um but for me, the thing that really sets Ringo apart is um, he's not always doing something, right? Uh, it, a lot of his songs, he'll, he'll, a lot of Beatles songs, he'll be sitting there and he'll be playing the kick and he'll be playing a tom, but he won't necessarily be trying to take up every frequency by making sure he's also got some cymbal work going or he's working the hi-hat, right? Um, there's, there's restraint in his playing, and as a result... The whole thing just works so much better. I love Ringo Starr. Number five. Criminally underrated, I think. I mean, it's it's hard to say that somebody who is as famous as Ringo Starr is criminally underrated, but... Number four. We've got another Joe Jackson drummer. <laughs> I had Dave Houghton up there at number six. Well, at number four, I've got Gary Burke. Um, and I'm picking Big World because Gary Burke obviously is the drummer on this. Uh, I could also pick uh, his live album, Summer in the City. Oh, man, that's a great album. Uh, Gary Burke is a wonderful drummer. Uh, he's solid. Um, I love the tone of his drums. Um, and oh, I just, I really like Gary Burke. And one of the main reasons why I like Big World as much as I do, I think, is Gary Burke's drumming. Fantastic drummer. Number four, Gary Burke. 
My number three drummer. I had a hard time coming up with a, a sample to hold up of this. I knew that I wanted to include this drummer, and I knew um, that I had uh, plenty of music in my collection that this drummer appears on, because this guy normally or regularly drummed with Steely Dan, and I've got in my library every Steely Dan album. The problem is I have most of these albums in the Citizen Steely Dan box set, and I didn't want to hold one of those up. So instead, I'm holding up Gaucho, which is not one of my favorite Steely Dan albums, but it does have one of my favorite Steely Dan songs, which is Babylon Sisters. And the drummer on Babylon Sisters is Bernard Purdy. Oh, man, I love listening to Bernard Purdy play the drums. Oh, the Purdy Shuffle. Oh, you got to love the Purdy Shuffle. One of the things about these 10 drummers is that I recognize them when I hear them, right? Uh, because that's that's the connection that I have. I recognize you know, Robbie Backman when I hear him. I recognize Dave Houghton when I hear him. I recognize Gary Burke when I hear him. I recognize Bernard Purdy when I hear him, uh, which is unusual for a session musician. <coughs> Excuse me, for a session drummer anyway. Um, there are plenty of albums that I have that I know Hal Blaine is drumming on but I don't necessarily recognize, oh, that sounds like Hal Blaine, because Hal Blaine is, he's, he's a timekeeper. I'm not, I, this, I do not intend that as a criticism of Hal Blaine. Hal Blaine is a fantastic drummer. But I'm not so adept in drums as an instrument that I'm able to distinguish uh, that, you know, he, he sounds like a great drummer, but he doesn't he doesn't have a signature sound to me. Bernard Purdy's got a signature sound. Oh man, I can pick him out of a lineup every time. And I love the way he sounds. I also love watching uh, videos of him explaining uh, his uh, demonstrating the the Purdy shuffle uh, because I love listening to him talk. I love Bernard Purdy. Coming in at number two, <coughs> excuse me. Time for another blast. <clears throat> That's good beer. Coming in at number two, one of my favorite drummers, obviously, is at number two, uh, is Bruce Gary, who is the drummer for the Knack. Um, the original drummer for the Knack. Uh, and I've got as my example um, uh, Round Trip, which I think is the best Knack album. Um, if you listen to one thing uh, to get a sense of what Bruce Gary is like as a drummer, uh, chances are good you've heard my Sharona at some point in your life, so you've you've heard that. Uh, but you want to hear the opening to the song Africa off of uh, uh, off of Round Trip, oh, man. Uh, but you could just pick a song, any song, and listen to it. Um, Bruce Gary, hell of a drummer. The Knack were I, horribly underrated. I, I think technically as musicians um, I think Bruce Gary is one of the best drummers uh, out there I technically I think he's one of the best drummers out there um, love Bruce Gary but my number one drummer my favorite drummer of all time uh, is primarily known for his work with a band that was very popular in the late 70s and early 80s um, I'm not going to use as my uh, display copy uh, one of the band albums. I'm going to use one of his solo albums. My favorite drummer of all time is Stuart Copeland. Uh, and I love this album. The Rhythmatist. Oh man, I love this album. This album also introduced me to uh, Ray Lima. I love Ray Lima. There's some fantastic music on this. Um, I love Stuart Copeland as a drummer. Um, he he could just, you could give him a hi-hat. Just just give him a hi-hat, that's it. That's that's all you get to use. And he's still going to, to, to rock. I mean, he's, he's, he's going to he's gonna wonderfully compliment any song that he's playing. He's going to stand out from the crowd. Um, oh, man. Stuart Copeland, hands down, my favorite drummer. So, those are my 10 favorite drummers. What are your, who are your 10 favorite drummers? Drop that comment down below. I always love hearing from you. And I do want to get a conversation going about this. So please, drop that comment down below. 
Um, I hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did, I'd appreciate it if you'd click the like button. Um, if you click the like button, go ahead and click the subscribe button as well. It's free. You might as well. If you do click the subscribe button, then click the bell for notifications. It matters to the YouTube folks. So I would, uh, uh, I would be grateful if you'd do that. Thanks again for watching today. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I know I enjoyed it. Uh, and I hope that the rest of your day is untroubled. See you soon.